And uh, huh? Huh? Watched <laughs> I'm not trying to call you out for being a minute late, but you're a minute late. Yeah. <laughs> I watched this. Wow. Got, got to say it's we'll a get KMA time. Time. We'll get you new batteries. Yeah. <laughs> Heavy carrier. I'm kind of slow anymore, too. Yeah. I'm sorry. Hey, no worries. No worries. So, uh, I have a motion to I'll approve our motion agenda. to approve the agenda. Okay. I'll second that motion. We got a motion in a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, uh, JD, you're up, sir. It's a fine morning, Faith County. There are people on Zoom too. Yeah, there's people on Zoom. So okay. you're projecting through the World Wide Web. Let's turn your attention to the engineer update this morning. It was sent out in a timely fashion yesterday afternoon. So even the blazer out with the uh, moisture of last week was a beneficial to that and crops I exposed. Problem with the uh, a couple of tandem and a couple of belly dumps. Belly dumps are hopping, hauling rock out of Iota for our test trip up there in the Northeast Park. We've uh, transformed the pipe crew to a dirt crew and they're working the slide to South End Lake on 160th Street, east, east of P Avenue there for those who close. Take a week to work on that. You know, flatten the slopes and move the ditch away and place some wood flat in the uh, little drainage there. Our spray bracket crew is working on mining. We got one more run finishing up the pavement there today. Then we'll pause for a while and do some other things. I have a little scrub seal experiment. We had not done this before in the county on the stretch of J52 between Nutmeg Avenue north of College Springs, going westerly and north to the intersection of M60 and J52. That's Thursday morning. There's also some work to be done on the west of Maple Avenue down the Missouri County line. That's also a stop at College Springs. Is that scrub seal there too? No. Oh, the scrub seal is only on J52. What's the scrub seal? A scrub seal, instead of simply spraying oil and then covering it with chips or the hate of it, they're going to spray oil and pull a drag behind it, basically a stiff brooms, fields or shop, shop brooms to work, and then the bristles will work. Oil in the cracks, but where has this been done at before? Well, it's been done around the nation in various locations, just not here, not commonplace here in Iowa or in Page County. I think it makes sense. Uh, this is kind of a, kind of okay for for us. I mean, and the and the vendor. And the, We've got some uh, machinery in, in Omaha. Number 30 should be done. 24 is still up there. EPR and coolant problems. 46 is in for the winter service. We, have, we do have a couple of trucks set up with tailgate sand. We normally have a stockpile of sand at College Springs for this work on Thursday. <coughs> Still on the construction side, we're focused on EWP work. Uh, last week, we grounded on Tuesday in the drizzle. And because of those little risks there, it might turn into more rain, but it looked worse all week. And, and so we made the right call that contractor did to proceed with that. It just would have gotten worse all week. But that was successful on site one. ESB is in working on site 11, that's on 170th Street on, on JD28. We 
you have, uh, we have received some federal money back for, from the feds on this, on these, uh, on the EWP work. We received $339,674.24. And the money just comes into the account, the treasury. There's no paperwork accompanying these deposits. It's uh, unusual in my uh, in my mind. I mean, there's boatloads of paperwork requesting these reimbursements. And you got to show all kinds of things. And then there's nothing when it comes back. Just the number shows up in the treasury, you know, in the account. And so the treasury, as I understand it. The treasurer was calling around the department last week looking for who had money coming in from the Fed. From the Fed. So, so anyway. it, how do we know then that it's foresight, uh, the project free site at number eight? Was it? Well, we have. Was we that have, the bill we We have numbers. Well, we requested reimbursements twice, and we've got some of each back, and I talked to the and our CS guy in the morning, he said he, he doesn't have an explanation for why some was paid and why some was not paid yet. So in the future, we're going to refine our, our methods by letting the treasurer know what numbers, what amounts we've uh, we requested. So we're, we're keeping track of it. So that number again, 339, what, JD? Six seventy four dollars okay. and twenty four cents. So, and that that does not match what was requested on this project. How short is it? Well, here it's it's there's there's no <laughs> rhyme or reason to do it. I mean, we've requested X and we got Y, and we trust the uh, the feds landing up the rest of it. Hmm. Uh, we do have project three, which is our last project, and is uh, going to let that on the first of October. I've uh, talked to the RCS about getting extensions, pushing the completion date of this project, and a couple that are already let off until next summer. And uh, let's see, uh, agenda item. For site eight, we got an executive board meeting this Friday at Sheridan. The Iowa Streets and Roads Conference that I was all excited about going to at the end of September was canceled. Hmm. It's just, <laughs> just, yeah, indeed. So, opportunity to go drive it up to rub shoulders with other road guys. Canceled. I guess they didn't ask me what I thought about that. But I guess that's the way it is. Uh, I do have a comment. One more comment. If you turn to your chart showing RUTF and then make a note on it somewhere, that shows two years worth of, of revenues by month. And, and this fiscal year 21. So the first quarter you know, through September in, in FY19, we, we had our ETF revenues of $1,072,600. In FY19, in FY20, the first quarter revenues were a million eighty-two thousand nine hundred and sixty-six dollars. So what was the difference I calculated? That's about that's ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. This year, in the first quarter of fiscal year twenty-one, we received revenues in the RUTF at a million hundred and thirty-four thousand nine hundred and fifty-three. You're right about losing the money on that. So what we can say is, you know, we can't speculate what may have happened if COVID hadn't occurred. But what I'm fairly confident in saying is that we have not been hurt 
by the COVID and the revenue fall. Yeah. Because roughly how far behind, what do they tell you as far as how far behind they are? Because what I say, they, they, they always told us that our UPM revenues were one month lag. Time 21 money was a two month lag. So we're we're in the third month right. of the fiscal year now. So this is right here. Right. Yeah, and it it kind of shows where June was really low of last year, of this last fiscal year. Right. And that would be tied back into that March, April, May of uh, where we saw some down. Right. Uh, so it looks like everything is. But, but even though, as you go, even though June was down, overall revenue right. last right. year yeah. was yeah. Up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. So that's reassuring that everything is. Yeah. Uh, things, yeah. things are on the schedule. Yeah. For yeah. Budget wise. That's good. Can, can we get the spreadsheet with the actual numbers on here? Yeah. yeah. No, that's very good. But <laughs> well, don't give away all my stuff. I got to talk about something. Well, no, that's good news. And that's uh, great news, you know, hopefully it's a uh, hopefully it's an indication that some of these other funding streams that we're so concerned about, the bottom may not drop out of them. I have another uh, item on the agenda. Yeah. For today, we have a set of plans, a final set of plans. We're trying to get there. Uh, I need a I can make a motion to approve the same in that executive graduate degree. It's on the front sheet there. I'll second that. Any discussion? Uh, when, when is that contractor work scheduled to begin? This project will be let on the 1st of October. Let on the 1st of October, okay. Excellent. So we have a motion and second. Any other comments, questions, concerns? The only the only question uh, that I have that relates to EWPs is uh, I would encourage you to stay in constant contact with Mr. Meyer and RCS about the differential because I, you know, I'm sure it's just an accounting gap, but I want to make sure it's an accounting gap. Uh, and can you regularly update us on those conversations? Sure. Okay. Um, we have a motion and a second here. Uh, let's take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries three to nothing. Okay. I need all the That's interesting about those road use, but and from what I've seen, Jango has picked up a good year gas stations and everything. You know. Yeah. Anytime I fill up, I'm there's only plenty of people at the pump. Yeah. So there's plenty of people on the road. Yeah, yeah there are. It's a lot busier than yeah. and for a while. Two dollar gallon gas doesn't hurt that either. No. no. Drop to the end of the day. Get it? I was in Missouri, I think. Over Labor Day, and I think I paid a dollar ninety-three. But uh, everywhere went up just one day here in the last two days. I'm going to get that you know, we'll Yeah, we have a in Shanville up here soon too. We'll be up, so it's up above, or up to Shanville's five mile radius. We're like kind of setting the high down. So, are there any uh, other items, JD, or does that conclude your report? That includes my report. Do you have any questions, guys? I'll keep sharing. I got one quick question. Going back to the test strip uh, on uh, 120th Street, mm -hmm. how, are, how are we doing on, uh, on measures? You know, that you and Jeff are kind of working on ways to help us all learn from this experiment. Uh, do you have those majors in place yet? Some of them. Uh, some of them. When, when they're complete, don't forget to bring it okay. to the board sure. so we can offer some input or ask some questions so that we fully understand what we're looking at. Okay. 
Anything left for you? Uh, uh, the 120th Street, Northeast 120th Street. The Northeast is the Northeast part of the county. Yeah, Northeast part of the county. Is that a real white rock? I haven't seen a lot of it. Oh, I would, I would be surprised if the light is maybe uh, you know, because uh, the dome light, the resentment that we're getting in, so we can get a piece side that's coming out of the same place. Up in Clayton County, Iowa. There's a way right down here. And the road out would be out of the same story. And it's yellow. And then, Chuck, you wanted to stop by about when? Uh, I think we had a state auditor here this morning, Melissa. Okay. Is a state auditor here for that entry interview at 11? Oh, phone call. They're not on site. Oh, they're not on site. So it's a phone call at yeah. 11. Yeah, if, if the meeting is done in advance of 11, I'll come over. If not, it'll be after that. Okay. Phone call. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Well, our agenda says 9 o'clock for opening the bids. I suggest we stick to the agenda and call for a uh, recess. I'm going to go get some coffee. Are you guys okay with that? We got 12 minutes before we open this. Can we need to take a vote on if we're okay? Can we? Do you want to vote on that? And ask for a reset. <laughs> Please. Okay, the recess. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Huh? Very good. Good. I guess. There's no coffee made downstairs. Why we do have a minute? Maybe this would be an appropriate time for Corey, uh, seeing he's here, to kind of forget he's here. I want to congratulate Corey and, uh, on all the hard work that he and others have done in preparation for the opening of the annex. Uh, we're very happy to uh, announce that our public health and our safety director and our EMA director will be all occupying space in the annex, which has been you know, uh, back before COVID struck, we had plans to totally renovate it. COVID kind of put a stop to that. Uh, the space we intended to be in, we were hoping by the 1st of August, but because of uh, COVID, we have been delayed. And so it'll be October, well, not the 1st of August, mid-August. It'll be that Monday, first Monday in October, which is Monday, October 4th, I believe. Uh, we spent a little bit of money on putting carpet down. We've uh, spent a little bit of money painting services, and then we've added some much needed electrical outlets for those offices so that they can operate all the equipment required. And uh, the good news is, is that with our CARES money, uh, because of the rules, we're able to utilize the CARES money to fund uh, any improvements that we've made to date. So there's been no additional uh, cost to the taxpayer, and uh, I think it's important to celebrate that. Yes, it is. So anyway, we are, uh, you know, they'll be operating. I know Chris is going to have space. He and Tom actually uh, will share space. Public Health, which has done an extraordinary job during COVID, you know, they can't even all gather in their current space, and they've managed a horrible situation very, very well. But they're excited. They, well, I think who's going to help them move? Well, I think that uh, Josh Dow has a crew lined up. I believe that what is going to happen is he's been contracted to do that. And uh, I'm sure they wouldn't wouldn't throw extra help out if they want to volunteer on move day. But uh, anyway, are they bringing donuts? Are they, uh, they might donuts? Corey, are you getting donuts? <laughs> but. Uh, Corey's role and Gene's role in this have been really unbelievable. Uh, you know, we've had to rewire things to technology, and Corey has saved the county a lot of money by fitting that into his already busy schedule. And uh, the phone numbers, and I don't know, the only thing I, and I need to ask you on Chris, did you get yours resolved? I'm using a different number for that office. Okay, it'll be a different number for that office. But, the one we were really concerned with, the one that's been publicized so greatly, is public health. And this transfer 
through the planning of Corey and the partnership of Mediacom, we're going to be able to retain all of those numbers. His number was not on the Mediacom system down at City Hall, so that became problematic. And we were hoping they could overcome it, but uh, it'll be a new number. And then hopefully sometime we get settled, we'll, uh, we'll do a little open house, but there's no date set for that yet. So uh, that's when you bring the donor. That's when you bring the donor to Alice can uh, cater. Chris, Chris will do that. They can. So, uh, but anyway, congratulations to the team for, for yeah. that. That's really uh, positive news uh, and much needed space that will be utilized. All right. Then the only other thing I had uh, while we were waiting on nine o'clock to come last week, we approved. Uh, signatures on a uh, not a proposal but a uh, letter of recommendation for initiative productions and uh, I told you I'd have a letter today in talking with Jackie Thrasher at Nishna they wanted to author the letter and it's not complete but it'll be forwarded to us for signature so uh, and then they are having a luncheon uh, on Monday in Shenandoah are you catering that at the Elks? I, I thought there was something on Thursday. Oh, maybe, yes, it, it is. Are you doing that on Thursday? I, I don't know who's doing what. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, the 17th, I think it is. 17th. Are you going? I, they had that one on Thursday, Shan. Monday was in Red Oak. I was planning on going Monday in okay, Red Oak. Okay. Would I'll you like to go to the one? the one on Thursday. Okay. Very good. I'll let Jackie know that. I'll, I'll let Julie, Julie contact me. So oh, did she? Okay. Okay. Great. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. And then let's see. I did. Uh, I also uh, had a discussion to bring you up today um, with CARES Act money. I noticed that in Nottaway County, that the county was giving grants away. And uh, so I called to inquire, but the Missouri governor gave all the money to the counties to disseminate that like in Iowa. But when I heard it, I thought, boy, that's a great idea. Uh, you know, they're giving away, the county's giving away money. Uh, but anyway. Huh? Well, hey, all I can say is no. I saw that in the paper down my mom said they were going to take a balloon back. But they were, yeah. Which I'm glad our governor didn't do that to us. We've got enough on our plate without figuring out grants. Yeah. Was at the uh, Mental Health Disability Service Board meeting. Yesterday, CARES money for the nine county region, uh, we received $1.7 million. And uh, so we, and it's designed for uh, mental health relief, children's mental health particularly. And uh, so we put it out, asked for con or asked for bids, and we looked at the bids or the, the grant proposals yesterday, and we didn't know if we'd get any or not. Uh, $2.7 million in requests, and we had wow. 1.7. So our team, our, le our leadership team, Thank goodness we'll go through all that and figure out a rubric and figure out how to pare it down to get it inside the, the range. So, yeah. so not having to go through that as a board mm -hmm. is a blessing. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, we got a few minutes to uh, review the our service this Saturday and visitation is Friday night. Friday starting at 1, I believe. And I don't know if you guys saw it or not. Rudy served. You know, Rudy pitched for the uh, A's. He was in their organization. Uh, quite an athlete. Quite a tennis player. Yeah. He's very good. Class three. Oh, Spar really? Spar? What was his main thing? Spain. Oh, is that Randy's sister? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll be darn, that's too bad. I, I was going to look, I think it starts. I, I think you're right, one or two on Friday and then services on Saturday. Zoom, Zoom services tomorrow at 10. Yes. 
You could use COVID quite a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After you got to be a supervisor, he did me. What did Bob say to you? What did Bob say to you before? The coach, didn't he? He was a tennis instructor, I think. Maybe at the Y or something. Yeah. I remember he did that, but I didn't know what he did as far as uh, but my son got to know him through that. So, um, so we're going to find out. I think it's one o'clock. It's Nelson Boylan. Go ahead. Okay, let's see. David Tajian. I should have just looked at the KMA side. It's easier to read. Um, no, you're right. Two to seven on Friday. Two to seven. Two to seven. Yeah. All right. Speaking of time, we're not quite to nine o'clock. We'll wait. Uh, how many bits did you bring with you, Melissa? Two. Two. Okay. And they all, uh, both of them came before yesterday's deadline, I assume. Yeah. Just to get money. Huh? Are you kidding me? Okay. Well, we've got, uh, we'll wait till 9 o'clock. We have uh, a file of sealed bid. Don't know who's from. We've got Berry Construction. So we'll open it at 9 o'clock. So, anybody want to get coffee? Do we know is is Angie going to be here on the mobile home abatement request? Do we know? Okay. Are these homes going to go down? I don't know. That's why I don't have any data on them. So I'd like to. What, what's the number down there? I'll call her real quick. We don't have the issue we used to have with that. Really? Seven. Mobile home parks. What's trigger that I would know? Various men to trigger out. So what's the mobile home parks? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Fifty-three what? Twenty. What's the number of hearing aid places? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, can I, is Angie available, please? Okay, thank you. You have a clear your chain? I don't know. We'll call on you. Hey, Angie, just check. Uh, are you planning on coming up at 9.30 for this mobile home abatement? Oh, good, good. Okay. Just hadn't heard, and we had several questions. I hope you're going to be here. So, awesome. Th thank you. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Bye. Yeah, they're going to be up here. So, I guess her and, her and Brenda will probably come together. Uh, all right. Well, it is magically... Okay, bid number one, Berry Construction LLC, Clarinda. Do I have to be kind to of the envelope? Okay. Hedgerow clearing with the house, tree and stump clearing north of the house and demolition of the house. The bid is $8,000. From Colton Berry. Mm -hmm. From Chad Masher to the County Board of Supervisors. I would like to start by thanking you for the opportunity to bid this job and thank you for taking the time to look at this bid proposal. 
As we are all finding this year to be very challenging, I wish you all the best. As for a little history on me and my business, I am a Clarendon native with a farming background, still being involved in working on the family farm and 20 plus years in the construction field. We've been involved with all types of farm construction needs, including tiling, terracing ponds, fence lines, building sites, new and demo, many NRCS projects, and even some DNR projects. I hope to always leave the land in a better state than before the work was done. When asked for references, I first say ask around about me so you will have a fair assessment, but we'll provide references if need be. We've done work in Page, Taylor, Montgomery counties in Iowa, Mottaway County in Missouri. I have no intention of leaving the Clarenda area, so my reputation must follow me in good standing. In close, you'll find copies of all the information provided to me to bid this project, a description of how the work will be completed to the best of my ability with the bid, and an aerial photo. If you have any questions, feel free to call. So Viv says, in close, you'll find a Google Earth map with drawings of locations what I feel you're asking for. Scope of work, remove tree line west of house labeled site A and place in a pile at location <coughs> site B. All trees and rubble to be removed then piled. After that, site A will be graded and smooth to blend with surrounding land. Remove house labeled site C and collapse into basement. Brush northwest of house, site D, to be removed and placed on top of house at site C. Site E will then be removed and placed on pile, site B. Site D and E will then be graded and smoothed to blend with surrounding land. A bulldozer finish will be called acceptable for this work. Limitations of this bid. This bid only includes removing and piling of said trees, buildings, and rubble. Masher construction is not liable for any disposal or removal of rubble or any hazardous materials that may be or are present. Some examples could be asbestos, shingles, or lead paint. With no completion date being published, work should be completed by July 1st of 2021 for a bid figure of $2,450. $450, but it's got a completion date of July 1 of 2021. Uh, and then, let's see, here's, he also included his attachments, the, uh, the aforementioned map that he referenced, copy of the ad is, is uh, printed in the local paper, and then a uh, public notice of the excavation that we posted here in the courthouse. So those are our two bids. Um, yes, absolutely. You know, reading that um, was enlightening. You know, when JD, I think a takeaway for me, if we ever had that kind of work again, uh, we probably need to give more description than we did in the ad. Um, because I'm guessing. Uh, I'm only guessing that this bid from Berry Construction of $8,000 might well have been based on I've got to have it done in 30 or 40, 60 days, yeah. which could be a really busy time. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess takeaway would be, is, again, if we ever get into that situation, that more information is better than less. And uh, with regard to, uh, you know, maybe what about the removal? I knew the one. His definitely says not uh, removal. Yeah, um, but I think John, your intent wasn't for it to be removed, was it? Was did I understand that right? But yeah. your intent was that there'd be a separate bid letting for concrete removal. Yeah. <clears throat> what about what about if there is asbestos shingles or anything of that nature? Oh, I'm gonna talk to Roger. I already talked to Roger because I I wondered that when. When I went out and looked at it. And Roger's opinion was that uh, it would qualify for farm ground. And most farmers, when they 
push them in the ground while the match drift, but they're fine. These here, was, and you can call and verify, but he, he didn't think it'd be a problem to burn it if we were diligent and didn't burn it on the day when the wind was blowing across the highway or falling into the ass. So that was his opinion. I don't know if we need to check further, but I'd say Roger's been in the business a long time. You thought you correct? From what I remember, Roger, I said, you're okay. Everything Roger said is okay. So, let John get through the, the bid, see if that matches with his vision, because I'm like you, Alan, I, uh, I think it, it needs to come down, I mean, after looking at it, it it's in really bad shape. I know it's kind of iconic when you come into town, but the structure is becoming an increasing liability. Yeah. So you have this oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah, I'm not I talk I didn't talk to Chad, he's my neighbor, I'll talk to him. But there's some metal gates in along this hedgerow in the weeds. I said we'll probably make a metal pile oh. somewhere there. And there's an old altar sitting there that Wendell didn't even didn't want. Use or want. They can match them up and put them in a pile. Would we would we best be to Make motions to table this for a week to make sure there's no other questions we have before we get John some time. I, I think I think it's all right. I think it's all right. He's he's got everything. Yeah, I looked probably yeah. like okay. I can't believe he can do it for that. <laughs> That's a good bit. That's a, that is a darn good bit. Yeah. You know, when I looked it up, the county thought. There was a little bit more work making possibilities. Some of these along the driveway that are hollow, they're dangerous, but people are against taking them down, so we'll let them fall down. Hope they don't fall on anybody. But I think their bid was like 19. So, you know, people said I was way off, and I said, my comment. Well, and that and that needs to be looked into because that that's too much despair. I mean, it it shouldn't cost him that, and that not us. There's something wrong with that. Yeah. Um, and I'm also going to see you. You haven't met your little man yet. Get off or whatever. Yeah. 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 How do you go with that? What I thought maybe when the excavator was there, they could put it higher and look at the set. You might think about that. Has the other been gone? Did she get yeah, it? Okay. one's gone, right? You know, let the old man out. Just got the ball from the bottom. Just got the ball from the bottom. Hope you don't got this. <laughs> You want to make a motion, John? I would make a motion we award the, the bid to uh, Chet Maxer for $2,450. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and second. Any other discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, congratulations. We'll all uh, send a note to Colton. Thank him. I think it's Colton Berry. Is yeah. That, yeah. Okay. I'll send a note to thank him for his bid. And, and again, uh, I, I just can't help but think that more information yeah. Yeah. would have made I, I agree. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, yes, absolutely. And then I thought when we uh, yeah. get it in, we, we got a place where the hospital dumped that 15 inch line and then we let them mm -hmm. bring the water up there from them. They dug two our feet over. It's eroding and then cutting back a big area. And I think we could dump that concrete in there to try to hold that off. And it's right close there, just through the field. Okay. And uh, maybe we could stop that erosion. It's got a spot probably a third of this room. It's, yeah. Eroding. I, I think that'd be the place for it. Otherwise, I was just going to haul it across the highway to uh, oh. just an older place there in the ground of the rock, but we could use the country. So, what's going on there? Might be great. Yeah. Yeah. John's going to make sure farm expertise. Yeah. Yeah. The county will make the farm expertise. Man. They will. I mean, I wouldn't have any clue on how to bid or uh, put this together. So, thanks. I didn't do much. The others did. I told them kind of part of it. But uh, it'll be nice to get it cleaned up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks pretty. It doesn't look very good driving by the highway if you look up there. It's quite a ways away, but but still, rather than have to mow the grass, and you'll pick up probably two or three acres of farm ground. So, yeah. And then take less work and maintenance. And it'd be great. All right, John Schwab is on the line. He's uh, here for a conservation update. John, good morning to you. You might be muted, John. Oh, can you hear me now? Sure, you're there. So, uh, you want to talk about uh, some issues out at uh, Raw, or not Ross, but uh, Pierce Creek. Yeah, we're uh, kind of been talking with NRCS and just seeing because of the fish kill what options we would have available to us um, just to kind of boost up the health of the lake. Okay. It's with the COVID thing and kind of their office is under a little more, I guess, stricter policies than what we have. Um, everything's just kind of holding off until we can get the watershed inspected and everything else. So that's kind of kind of just on hold for now. Well, our apologies. COVID really has sidelined our, our inspection. We were scheduled, I think, back clear back in March or April when all this started. And uh, Ms. Fine has contacted us at least one other time since then. And we've not gotten a date together. We need to get that done. So, uh, um, but you're you're kind of waiting on that report before you can realistically look at any recommendation. Yeah, because it's pretty much from after talking with them, our two options would either be to dredge it or to raise the water level. Um, either one, he said, NRCS's engineer is going to have to come out and look at it. Um, then they have to take into account the dam since all that's kind of federal, and then go through their process just to see if they would say it's possible or if we can't do anything. He said it could kind of go either way, depending on what their report would be when they inspected it. Okay. Didn't we judge it not that many years ago, John? Oh, what was that? I couldn't hear you. Didn't we judge it several years ago? Um, I'm not sure because I know when I came on, Rich had told me that they were looking at dredging because I know they lowered the level. And I think they did some targeted dredging, but um, NRCS even, they're going to look into it too because we had something on file here that basically said that we wouldn't be able to go in and do like a big dredge because it was something with the soil and the silt that was built up in there. So we're still looking for the records on that because I know initially it was just supposed to be dammed off, silted in, and they were going to drain it and turn into farmland, but that was before it was a park. So I think that's where everyone's kind of looking to see if, if federally, if we'd even be able to do it. Yeah. So, um, 
I guess it's too early to speculate on, on the outcome of our tour and what the NCR, NRCS says about the data that's gathered, but it's good to have it on our radar because it sounds like we, we have an issue that regardless of what solution is suggested, uh, we're probably talking a lot of dollars, aren't we, John? We are, and it's going to, I mean, it's definitely, it's even starting to impact our revenue because uh, the only fish that have been pulled out of Pier Pierce Creek since the fish kill has been a couple catfish, um, but no other species anyone's caught out there. We'll know more about that um, when DNR comes out and does their population sampling, which should be fall time period. Okay. Well, uh, I'll reach out to, to them to try to get us a, a watershed tour. That, as I remember, that's uh, pretty much an all-day thing, John, and from the last one. Doesn't it take us? I mean, we're out there for several hours, so yeah. we got to have good weather. Uh, on those PL566, yeah. And we split up in teams and look at that whole system. All right. Was there anything? Was we'll uh, we'll follow through with uh, with the good folks to try to get calendars coordinated, get out there uh, if we can in September to get that work done, so you guys can move forward with what you need to do. Um, is there anything else you had for us, John, in terms of an update? Um, we are going to start draining Pioneer October twelfth. Yeah. Um, and then right now it's been it's been published and just to I guess have another outlet to get it out. Um, the fishing regulations of Pioneer have been really lax. Um, DNR has come in and removed a lot of the restrictions. So if people want to go fish at Pioneer, anything they catch, we're encouraging them to keep. Um, we're just trying to lower that fish population as much as we can. Okay, great. So are you thinking early, mid, or late October? Or do you know yet? Um, it'll be October 12th. We have, uh, there's a wedding planned out there. They had reserved Pioneer for October 10th. So it's going to be pretty much right after that, weather permitting, hopefully, that we'll be able to get out there. And we're hoping to have it completely drained by winter. Okay. The other, the other question I have, you mentioned revenue uh, dips at Piers Creek. Uh, with COVID, what about the other parts? The revenues uh, streaming higher? Um, it's actually revenue wise across the board. Um, we're actually sitting pretty good. We're right at about 50% and that's only two months in. So revenue wise, um, it's been really good, but yeah, with the construction at pioneer and then the lack of the fish, we're guessing it's probably going to slow down come next year. But as of right now, we're actually ahead of schedule on revenue, thankfully. Okay. Very good. Uh, and then uh, I know you've been working on some horse trails. I've heard uh, from some constituents who uh, were trying to, uh, you know, figure out some game plans on uh, some of the trails with debris. And as you told me, uh, some of that equipment was uh, that was promised or had been told you could use hasn't materialized yet, or something. And so, are, are we making progress on getting? that moving forward so trails are indeed cleared? Yeah, we are both at Pierce and Ottawa. Um, since we're kind of at the unofficial end of the camping season, my guys have got a lot more time where we can get back. So, yeah, we're, they're actually out in the trails in Pierce right now just kind of cleaning some stuff up. Um, so, yeah, we're hoping those hopefully will be done still this season so people can get some hiking and some riding in before winter hits. But, yep, we're moving forward on that. All right. Anything else, anybody? No. How's the Russian olive trees doing? How's the what doing? The no. Russian olive trees. The Putin olive trees. Um, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> They're very invasive. So, I, I I do know tree wise, we're actually um today that's why i'm coming out of the middle of nowhere um we're getting all our grant trees 25 trees to plant a raft that we'll be doing this week so that's another huge project so what are, i'm just curious uh, what are you going to plant there because of that soil yeah. what what's going to work there um there's let's see if i still got my list um we're getting some kentucky let's see 
Kentucky pecan trees, bald cypress, um, some swamp elms, and uh, Kentucky coffee trees and royal crab apples. So those were the the species the forester kind of identified that would grow best over there in wrap soil. So. Awesome. I haven't heard of half of those trees, but I'm glad because they, they need trees that wrap. That's yeah. the only thing holding wrap. That, that can be a real jam of a revenue producer and a great, great park for Page County. Once you get the yeah, and that, that's it. been our biggest, kind of one of our biggest complaints out there is that there's just no shade. But yeah, they told me these species, they get pretty tall and they, they grow pretty quick. So, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll all still be around when there's shade out there. <laughs> you have a better chance than me, but uh, John, appreciate you running there. Thanks, John. All right. Yeah, thanks, guys. Have a good one. Yeah, you do the same. Tell your crew we appreciate what they do. All right, 922. Um, we can go early on the door monitor. So, time to discuss the door monitor. We reached the end of the line for what we've been doing. We need to change. I know we said at the front end we'd try to continually update analyze where we're at and where we need to be. And so I put it on the agenda because it's personally my feeling that we're, we're time for us to position into something different. But, and uh, yesterday I went around the courthouse and talked to department heads to ask them for their input on what their feelings were. And I think there was clearly a consensus that they would like to see us kind of open things back up. Uh, just continue to go and monitor. The, the questions that probably require more thought, because I think everybody's pretty much in agreement with that, but the questions that maybe require a little more discussion are the language that we're currently use, uh, using is mandatory mask. Without a door monitor, is that realistic? Should we make that a suggestion rather than a mandatory? I did talk with the clerk of courts this morning before I came upstairs, and they're under state guidance, and uh, the guidance of the Supreme Court. And regardless of what our policy is, they will require entry into their office with a mask, uh, even if we, you know, choose not to make it a requirement for us. And they're okay with it either way. In my opinion, we've been doing it mandatory. I'd probably leave it. My concern with that, John, and, and who's going to enforce them? Yeah. yeah. Well, each office should be going there with that. I say to be asked. Yeah. I, I don't know. And I I think it I don't know. From going around town and, and seeing how the sign say is preferred and, and or mandatory at some stores and people lift it off as soon as they walk in and, and who's going to be the guy that has to say put it on or get out. I mean that's what worries me. I don't think any of these three elected officials and any of the hired members want to be the person that has to walk up and say to somebody they know or don't know that you gotta leave. You know, and that's I think it should be required and as long as they're behind their desk and as long as they use precautions and if they choose not to wait on somebody. That can be done at any time, correct? If you feel it's an unsafe situation, you can ask them to leave, correct? So, I don't know. I don't. And I, I would like to think everybody would wear yeah. them, but it's it's obvious that people in Page County aren't following that guideline. You know? Yeah, I just, I mean, I, I Fundamentally, I agree with you. You would hope that people that you could put mandatory up and people would comply, but I think it creates undue stress on our elected yeah. officials to, you know, they're they're busy enough with their work, and then when they become police officers and, yeah. and potentially confrontational, uh, to me, it's not worth it. Somebody wants to be a jackass, I would use that language, and not comply and walk in public space without a mask when they've been asked to wear one. Shame on that. All right. You know, I, I guess my recommendation for everybody in the offices are if they have to be in a confrontational situation or in a situation where they need to walk out in the public, put the mask on, protect yourself, protect others. Um, 
but as far as when you're in behind the shields, I would assume that is to protect them. So um, if they're not wearing their mask, it's probably just as safe as we are in here. So and I think when they're behind the shield, both yeah. workers and our customers customarily been taking the mask off yeah. that thing because they're using a shield to protect. Yeah. And now that the CDC has removed that touching point, you know, I mean, early we were concerned that it was being transmitted through this. Yeah. Now that we don't believe that to be true, then yeah. really the airborne risk is mitigated by those shields. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that it needs to be said again how how uh, well our people have done mm -hmm. under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. They've taken shots, people, this has all been so politicized, and they have provided service, mm -hmm. they've come to work, sometimes it's remote, sometimes it's through the Dropbox, telephone, email, but we have provided the county, our employees have provided outstanding service, and we haven't missed a beat. And we haven't gotten anybody sick at this point. We've learned more about the disease. We've been prudent. We're going to continue to be prudent, but we're going to ask people to please help us stay prudent. And please wear that mask. But to mandate it, we're spitting in the wind. So you're going to stay prudent. Yeah. Or I'm not sure. I think we need we need a few days to work with public health and with Tom yeah. to devise the language to. Yeah. Uh, you know, agree so we can message it to the media so that it can be posted in a way that's I consistent. Would, I guess I would even say that we continue as we are until language is developed and science is done until it's close to the first of October. And that should, it'll take at least a week, if not a well. I don't think it took that long. I really don't. Right. Yeah. The end of next week. Thank you. I think the language is designed to be there's enough out there and you go to something that I call it that they just say fact face mask is recommended uh while on the store. A lot of those things can be downloaded to the CDC. Thank you. Can I bring it up this week? Yeah, other than this language thing, Tom, you're saying by the end of next week we could have. I, I think we could have. I think, I think we have the, the language part for the signage. We can probably have that uh, next week. Oh, this week. Okay. Yeah. So maybe start on Monday is what what yeah, I'm hearing. It's just a matter of downloading the signage to the front door. I mean, that would be like. So you go from the north door. Well, those are the other issues. Do you, yes, do you reopen everything? I would uh, suggest that yes, we do. Yeah. But the, the bathrooms, right now these bathrooms have key locks, and I was playing, Jess and I played with, and I hadn't talked to Dean yet, but I believe he's reading on the back side of the panel that we can disable the auto lock. Right now, if you have the code and you walk in 30 seconds later, it relocks, and I'd like to disable that, or suggest that we disable that. And that the bathrooms would be available as well. A lot of times, a lot of places they are open. Okay. The restroom. Okay. The, the rest is. But not the restroom. Right. So I, I'm open either way. I just, uh, I don't have really a recommendation. I think it's a, you know, I think you guys can. I think it's pretty them. hard on June to try to keep everything in place. You could just open up the can we just keep it like the yeah. one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do they do? Three the bad one. Yeah. So But here, so we have two things, bathrooms and doors. So let's, let's stick with the doors for a minute. So I, I thought I heard consensus just open all the doors, but right now I'm not hearing that. You want to keep the north door closed to public, open up the handicap? My personal opinion, I think, is to help the people in the building here that would be reopened and open up the house. Before you open up all the doors? 
uh, from the auto group's office and scheduling uh, added extra duties, and we appreciate uh, everybody's cooperation. Okay. Yes, and I'm sorry, we're going to leave. I think that makes sense. So the employees will continue to code into the bathrooms and use the one public space, and the public will have one space. Uh, we did not talk about the bathroom. We did not That's talk though, about those downstairs, so we, I guess we're keeping those shut. We're keeping yeah, it yeah, as is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bathroom bathrooms, yeah. Okay, great. So next up, mobile home taxes. We're being asked to a fake. Can you come on up to the microphone, please? <laughs> Smile for <laughs> Yeah. We now have 12,000 people watching. Hey. So, don't screw up. <laughs> so, three mobile homes on the agenda requesting a bait minute um, for the mobile home park owner, Joe Olipiba. Um, I just, they're each a little bit different, or so it's one of them is different than the other two. The first one listed on the agenda. That unit was moved out of the mobile home park prior to July 1. And so mobile home parks are current year um, versus real estate tax, which is uh, year behind. So they're on fiscal year. So in reality, that um, just needs to be renewed. And we can actually just do that one in our office, but I'd like it to be a programming agenda just to have okay. something to showcase our others. <laughs> yes, this is a sorry, the mobile home park. All three are. All three are. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other two, um, we have actually, he reached out to us after we sent out um, a statement. They have been abandoned and um, unable to live in. So um, he said the ceiling's falling in on, you know, walls are moldy. So Kenna, she takes care of a um, mobile home for us and she drove down there and they are indeed um, unlivable. So one of the options that he has. About the only option I guess to not pay those current taxes is to request a junking certificate. So I worked with him on that and he has done that. So he can be exempt from um, mobile home taxes for this year if he um, requested and received a junking certificate. So basically, he submits his current titles into us. We retain those and he gets junking certificates so he can't sell them. So being a mobile home park owner, you know. He's going to want to get rid of those so he can get a new little home park in there and make money. So I reached out to a bigger county um, that has a lot more mobile homes than we do because we have very small parks. And she said this is their common practice and then they as well just come to the board and request to that those um, be removed because the manual does say that's like the only one. The unit for which a junking certificate has been issued is exempt from taxation. So he did do what was required to be exempt. Uh, so you'd get rid of them. I'm sorry. You'd get rid of them. Yes, I did verify that on my last conversation that he would be removing those. Because you've met Joe, <laughs> he told me they would. So, and Kenna Welch, she has them now on her. So when she does her next verification, you know, we'll see where those are. And that, but with the jumping certificate, it does state that because he can't make any money on that. But yep. hopefully they'll be removed. But, but the jumping certificate does not require him to move it as such. It does not require him to move it, but it's essentially right. It makes can't sense. Make there's any there's no, no revenue available. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And they're available in the current condition. Okay. I have a motion to accept the uh, mobile home tax abatement request. I'll make that motion to abate the home taxes on these three mobile homes. I'll second that. Okay. Motion by John, second by Alan. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. I never had a mobile home in three and a half years. So this is our my first mobile home. Yeah, we don't have a lot going. Um, he does a good job and Kenna does a good job of just keeping things current. Like that one that moved, you know, it's all the timing. So yeah. I mean they do a pretty good job. When I first started there was kind of a deal over in Shenandoah mm -hmm. with that one. Yeah. 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 Was that right? That's one? Yeah. 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 We got rid of that. that yeah. So I think you remember I think right when you were on the first year there's like seven or something. But since then we really don't do a lot with them of a home park. He pretty much keeps them to go. So good. Well thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right, next up approve the minutes from our meeting a week ago. Everybody read through it? Yep. 
I, I got to go back through. There's one word I looked at. I'm going to see if it's, I still feel the same way. I don't remember. Off the top. Uh, under the uh, suspension of public comments, uh, I, I'd feel better uh, if the word temporarily suspending public comment was put in there. Uh, very bottom near the near the motion of approval of life which says more yeah. Okay, thank you. I can make a motion to approve with that amendment. Okay. I'll second that. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carried. And um, uh, on that topic of public comments, just want to reiterate too that uh, uh, all of us are accessible by phone or email, and we're uh, happy to hear from anyone <laughs> at any time. Okay, uh, motion to adjourn. Thank you all for coming. Thanks for being online. We're going to close our online meeting. And